Somber Megan sings hymns at dawn as she attends her first official service of remembrance with Harry to mark Anzac Day. On a cool spring morning in April, Meghan Markle took part in her first official service of remembrance as she joined her fiancé, Prince Harry, at an Anzac Day dawn service. Organized by the New Zealand and Australian High Commissions, the couple arrived at Wellington Arch in central London for the service of commemoration. Meghan, 36, looked suitably somber in a cream coat, black hat and heels, with her hair loose, as the couple sang hymns including Abide With Me. As the sun broke over the London skyline, Harry, a former army officer who served for 10 years in the forces, laid his floral wreath at one of a group of metal crosses near Wellington Arch in central London. A handwritten note from the prince, attached to a wreath of red roses, read, For all those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in pursuit of our freedom. Thank you, Harry. Ems Markle may not yet be a member of the royal family but she has attended a large number of official events in the run-up to her royal wedding on May 19. The American passed a cultural milestone when she, and Harry, were welcomed by Taya Tiredi Warini from Ngadi Ranana with a traditional hangi, the soft pressing of noses and the sharing of each other's breath. There were other Maori elements during the dawn service including a haka performed at the end, a longer version of the one displayed by the famous New Zealand rugby team the All Blacks before matches. Ems Warindi said about Megan, she was amazing. I'm not sure if it's her first time at a Maori ceremony but she did very very well. It was really lovely to meet her and share the breath of life and share our culture with her and Harry. Anzac Day has been commemorated in London since the first anniversary of the Anzac landings at Gallipoli in 1916 when King George V attended a service at Westminster Abbey and more than 2,000 Australian and New Zealand troops marched through the streets. Since then, the services have become an important moment to recognise the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps who died during the landings. Anzac Day is commemorated as a public holiday in both countries with memorial ceremonies held at various locations. The dawn service at Hyde Park Corner lasted 45 minutes. The service began at the New Zealand Memorial and included readings, the last post, silence, Reveille and national anthems, before the couple moved to the Granite Australian Memorial. Harry and Meghan were joined by the New Zealand and Australian High Commissioners and both signed a book of remembrance. Later in the morning at the parade service at the Cenotaph, Prince Harry will lay a wreath on behalf of Her Majesty the Queen. Between 300 and 400 participants will take part in the parade, including member of veterans associations, service and ex-service personnel and their families. Following this parade, he and Meghan will be joined by new father Prince William at the service of commemoration and thanksgiving at Westminster Abbey. This will be a traditional church service, incorporating an act of remembrance, the last post and Kamal Ataturk's words from Anzac Kovarad by the Turkish ambassador to the UK. At the conclusion of the main service in front of the New Zealand War Memorial, Harry and Meghan walked over to pay their respects to the Australian troops just the other side of Wellington Arch. The Australian War Memorial was dedicated in 2003 to the 102,000 Australian dead of the First and Second World Wars. Harry took the lead, although glanced several times behind him to make sure his fiancée was following. The couple first went to sign a book of commemoration together, believed to the first time Miss Markle has done so. She then watched from the side as Harry laid a beautiful wreath at the base of the granite memorial with a handwritten card which read, In loving memory of those who made the ultimate sacrifice and the many whose lives were changed forever. Harry, he bowed and then waited for Miss Markle to join him before they thanked their hosts and walked off to their waiting car for the short drive back to Kensington Palace. Thousands of women finally take the lead at Anzac Day marches as calls to change tradition and acknowledge their sacrifice grow louder. Australians gathered at parade on services on Wednesday to commemorate the moment when Australian and New Zealand Army Corps troops waded ashore at the Gallipoli Peninsula in Turkey 103 years ago in their first major battle of World War I. Because extremists have targeted annual Anzac Day ceremonies in the past, concrete barriers were placed around the service in downtown Sydney to protect those who gathered at Martin Place. Among those at the head of the parade was 100-year-old Molly Cummings, who is honouring her many family members who have served for Australia. This year, for the first time, women's service groups marched consecutively as part of the By the Left campaign, which aims to raise the profile of female veterans. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, his French counterpart Edouard Philippe and the heir to the British throne, Prince Charles, will mark Anzac Day in France with a service that also commemorates the 100th anniversary of Australian troops taking the town of villers bretaux from the Germans. villers bretaux is now home to the main Australian memorial of the Western Front. At villers bretaux Turnbull and Philippe on Tuesday unveiled a memorial plaque at the new Sir John Monash Centre Museum which is named after the Australian general responsible for taking the town. Turnbull and his wife, Lucy, also visited the grave of her great-uncle Roger Hughes who was killed by a German shell in 1916 five days after arriving on the Western Front as a young military doctor. 
Turnbull said in an Anzac Day message that Australians remember veterans of every generation who risked their lives for their country. We best honour the Anzacs of 1918 and the First World War by supporting today's service men and women, Turnbull said on social media. Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton represents the Australian government at a service at Anzac Cove at Gallipoli, where the Australian and New Zealand troops landed under British command in an ill-fated attempt to take the Ottoman Empire out of the war. More than 44,000 Allied soldiers were killed at Gallipoli. Turkish casualties were estimated at 250,000. At the Australian War Memorial in the capital Canberra, an estimated crowd of 38,000 to 10 percent of the city's population gathered in the cool autumn darkness for the dawn service which began with a lone soldier playing a didgeridoo. The attendance at this year's dawn service shows the enduring connection so many people have to Anzac Day, Memorial Director Brendan Nelson said in a statement.